hello everyone in the previous videos we have seen about the basics of artificial neural network their activation function and their components along with that we have also tried nc tool which is an inbuilt uh, tool in matlab for developing a simple neural network model but as i explained in the previous video there are some drawbacks when we use nc tool because you cannot change any of the parameters and the control over the model is not mostly in your hand so in this video i'll be showing you about another tool which we can use to develop a neural network model so the tool which we'll be using in this video is nn tool so similar to nc tool this is a user interface which is inbuilt in the uh, matlab which is used for development of the neural network model so initially before developing the model as i have mentioned in the previous videos the data which we are going to use is satellite data as well as observed data of precipitation so as i mentioned earlier the data should be in a row matrix for uh, the software to understand what you are trying to develop and do it in a correct way so to convert this row matrix into column matrix there are two easy methods one being uh, transposing of the data using a small uh, code if you say like this so as you see if we try to transpose by providing this is the symbol which we use for transpose in matlab so if you see it is converted to a row matrix so in the same way instead of doing this you can also click the data and in the variable section you can see transpose and it will be transported easily so this is the main step which you need to do before starting to develop a model because if you try to develop a model without doing the transpose the network does not run so let's begin to develop this model so if you see the firstly uh, there are different types of data as we need to import uh, instead of doing a very complex network we will try to develop a simple input output relation network and thereby getting out what are the results which we want so firstly when we go to the import we have two main methods in which you can give either from a matlab workspace here or you can go from browsing the data which if you have any mat file of the name so we'll start with matlab workspace because we already saved it so in this as you see you can import different types of data sets like input target output data initial input states initial layer states and others so i'll put the input data in the input section and the pop up says it's imported the same with the target data in the target section so once we close it we can see that the data of both input and target are imported into the tool so the next step is convert uh, trying to get a network developing a network in the tool is the next step to develop the model so when we go to the new here there is a pop up saying what are the types of data which we need to input and what is the transfer functions which we can use for developing a model if you recall from the previous videos i have mentioned some of the models uh, which a neural network has like perceptron model or feed forward back propagation etc there are multiple models here which i have been discussed but there are quite a few which are commonly known like feed forward neural network model generalized regression model and radial bias and perceptron model in this uh, video will use the basic feed forward back propagation model 
where the network not only goes in the one direction that is input to output but it comes back to correct the errors for detailed understanding you can again see the previous videos which I have included in the description so in the next step while giving the data as we have already given the input data to the network we can just directly select it and the training function as I have explained in the previous video of NC tool it is the function which is governing the training parameters thereby developing a model which is resembling to the natural set which we want to develop on and here if you see this is a new thing which I haven't discussed until now this is a learning function learning function generally represents how the model is able to take up information from the input and output and create a relationship so that it is able to understand the patterns in the data set there are again two types of learning functions which we can use but for now let's leave it with the basic standard set which it comes from and when com uh, coming to the performance function if you see if we have mean square error sum of squares of errors and mean square errors so for now let's leave it as it is because it just shows uh, the error component what we will get after seeing the output and comparing it to our observed data so you can use this just to see the accuracy of the model and the next step if we see there are number of neurons if we if you recall from the previous videos I have explained about how to decide the number of neurons and how can you determine when the model is good so based on that again you can either start with 2n plus 1 where n gives the number of input variables you are giving in this case I will be leaving it with 10 neurons to try it next transfer functions similar to the activation functions transfer functions play an important role in transfer of data from neurons to neuron trying to relay the information and develop a good uh, relationship here we have tan sigmoidal log sigmoidal or purely linear functioning of this transfer function again uh, choosing this transfer function is also an important task because this also plays a governing role in the accuracy of the model different types of functions can be used for different purposes it depends on the uh, type of the model you are creating and the accuracy you need or how the model is performing for that data set so I'll be talking about these things in the further videos for but for now I'll be sticking with what the basic function is so let's create the model as you can see the model is created so I named it as network1 did not change the name so when we open the model if you see the input what we have given are, are only one row and these many columns so it is represented here and I have given the number of neurons as 10 and the output layer is also 1 if you have done any error uh, let's say you forgot to transpose the matrix before giving you can identify it here because it might show you here 470 sorry 4720 representing that you have done something wrong because you need to have one in my current data set so if it is not one here then it means that either you did some mistake while transposing or importing the data so after checking this you can go to training of the model where you can see it is asking the training data sets and the target data sets as they are already in the network they are popping up here and you can just choose them so this is similar to the work we did in NC tool until now you can just directly go and train it and the model works but if you want to further improve the model 
uh, thereby getting a better results you can go to training parameters firstly we'll see how the train network is functioning if you click it you can see that the same pop up in the nc tool and nf tool which we used is coming up where the validation checks the gradients the performance of the things are shown so let us see the plot of uh, checking the accuracy of the model which it has developed so when we click here it shows the correlation parameter of training validation testing and and the overall set so when we see it we can see that the correlation of the model developed is 0.35 in the training whereas the validation it was quite higher and the testing result has come down so again referring to the previous videos i have already mentioned that you can put a benchmark of around 0.8 to 85 as a good training uh, correlation value to see if the model is working well if we compare it to that we can see it's quite low this can be either due to the type of data set you are using or there is some error in the data set or the target data set is quite different than the input data set for example if you are trying to predict discharge let us assume and you are using only input data as the driving factor which contains only precipitation you know precipitation values might be in 20s or maximum 100 but the discharge might be in thousands so trying to convert this 100 data into 1000 data the model cannot understand like why we are trying to convert 100 to 1000 thereby tries to convert it and extrapolate but he cannot uh, do it in a correct way so if you are also giving discharge with it and trying to do it even if you are facing errors when you give input discharge also then you can go to the procedure called normalization of the data where the data is brought to the figures between 0 to 1 to try and get a better value that method can be used to improve the performance of the model and get a better result so that is one of the method which you can follow to increase the error the second method being as you saw here the number of checks it has done is 6 and the number of iterations it has been trying is maximum of 1000 as i mentioned earlier you can change various parameters in training and when you come here you can see that there are quite a lot parameters which we don't understand the most but the parameters which can be easily understood are the number of iterations and the number of fails so if we we can try to increase the number of of course to 10000 and number of fails to 100 and rerun it we can try to get a better results if you see here it has tried many simulations compared to 6 because i wanted it to increase the number of checks to get a better result the same with iterations it has gone to more more iterations than the previous version let's see the regression plot of the errors what it has shown so if you see the value has changed from the previous uh, training value where it was 0.35 now it is 3, 0.36 but the validation result has dropped and also the training uh, testing result has increased so in this way you can try several models where once you have changed it and now you can play with the number of neurons in the model if you remember while developing the model we have given 10 so you can try based on 11 12 or even lower 9 8 7 and try to check which model is giving better results for this transfer functions which we are using if you find that although whenever you are trying and this result is not working out you can try to change the transfer functions and uh, see which transfer function is giving better results so there are quite a few uh, parameters you which you can work with 
and try to see which one will give you the better better results so this is how you can train a model and see how the result is coming out so based on this when comparing to the previous uh, thing we can see that this is how the training of the model is done but when you want to simulate something let's assume you have some data of other precipitation and you want to find out how it is converting to the same IMD data then you can input that data into the workspace and give it here where you will find another name whatever you are inputting into the workspace let's assume call it as data you will input data into the workspace and see it here and thereby simulate a network and check its values also so this is how you can train a model and also simulate it for the other data sets with the train model using NN tool I hope you got a good picture about how we can use NN tool for developing a model as mentioned there are quite a few models which you can develop uh, in the NN tool but in this video I have shown you about how you can develop a feed forward back propagation model in the neural network thank you for uh, watching this video if you liked it uh, please like and subscribe and if you know someone who wants to understand it or this uh, video would be useful please share it